I want to ask you about that. Uh, we want to get to Karl Rove and talking about what he had to say about Republican candidates in the future. But I, I, just to sort of finish that off, because this video, as Jim said, is making it. Uh, it is. Going, it's going, it, right. Getting and a lot of attention. They've even gotten some response, you know, from the right, from the White House and, and different things. But, and but this, this guy, Ambassador the, United Kim Jong Il, the, the, the guy who died, who was the dictator that it's his son now that's in charge. And, uh, Sandy, I don't know how a person can keep in control of so many people. I don't know how many millions of people there are in North Korea, but how can you stay in control of something that's so, uh, impoverished? I mean, you gotta have money to pay the soldiers to keep the people down. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, and even so they're keeping their own family in this situation. It just would seem like maybe they've been so propagandized and so mind and brainwashed for so long I don't know how that works, but you stepped into that world. Is there any idea? How do you keep this thing going? Well, part of the answer to that, Tim, is that they, they are so extremely isolated. And I guess probably the best example of that would be, if you can imagine, uh, there were seven of us in North Korea on 9-11, and we were there through 9-12. What were you doing there? We were in northern Manchuria, that's part of China, doing interviews with refugees from North Korea. Uh, Korea. They were being uh, hidden, um, kept by Chinese Christians who were hiding them in their homes. They were, some were hiding in caves. Uh, it was an amazing experience. I mean, I, interv- I heard some of the most incredible stories. I was in the home of a woman who, who had taken in four boys who had swum across the Tumon River, which separated northern Manchuria from China, to get rice because they were starving. And they found refuge in her home, and she had uh, she was a Christian. All of the people that are helping are Christians, and they put themselves in harm's way because the Chinese government is very harsh on people that help. She took these little boys in, and we met pr- secretly in her home and sat on the floor and talked to these little boys. That's just one story. And I, the boys talked about swimming across the river and about what it was like. Uh, they were, by the way... These boys looked like they were 14, 15 years old, and they were actually 17 and 18, but they were so small from malnutrition. So the Chinese all across the border, northern Manchuria, and even we worked with um, a couple that had come, were American Koreans, who had a thriving business in California, who had moved to northern Manchuria to devote themselves to ministry. Uh, to the people there. So our idea was the guys went out in the caves. Uh, they, we were, there were six of us broadcasters from around the country, from the major cities, New York and San Francisco and uh, Chicago, and I don't even remember where else without stopping for, to think, but Dallas. And uh, so the idea was we would get interviews and we would come back to the States and tell the stories. But as we went into northern Manchuria, we were asked last minute if we wanted to go into North Korea. Well, this is still 2001. Nobody goes into North Korea. Nobody. But we said yes, and we, they were able to manipulate it somehow so that the North Koreans thought we were coming in to bring school supplies. I mean, I could go on and tell you a lot of detail, but let me just say this. We were so isolated that when we came across back across the Tuman River on September the 12th in the afternoon, we went to a Chinese restaurant in northern Manchuria, and the guy, the owner, said, you guys know what happened. You know that United Airlines, and he goes on to talk about the World Trade Center, and, all, and I thought he was crazy. And I said to our host, is this man sane? Is he, is he crazy? And uh, we had at the time, uh, we had a, um, a satellite phone. And so our broadcaster from New York City called the satellite phone. Hold on a second. <laughs> Hang on. I'm talking with Sandy Rios on American mm-hmm. Family Radio. Well, today's North issues. Korea's calling. Yeah, that's her yeah, satellite right. phone. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. All right, so um, he called his wife in New York City, and she confirmed it all. We were just, we, it had been over 24 hours, and we knew nothing mm. because we'd been in North Korea. Mm. My point is they are absolutely mm. isolated and shut off from the world. People don't have radios or televisions. They don't have anything. 
Uh, and and North Korea is a brutal country. It's yeah. so cold in the winter. Um, well, you know when so you that's the reason, s- Tim. You know when you when, you know when a good thing is escaping to China. Uh, <laughs> You know, yeah, you know if it's that's bad. where you're looking to become yeah. a refugee. Let me ask you this. Can, because of that DMZ, isn't that what they call it? Yes, demilitarized zone. Because of that, between North Korea and South Korea, uh, can't so North Koreans can't escape to South Korea, can they? No. Oh, my gosh, no. It's so just... Uh, it's South Koreans of- are freedom-loving people. They're basically a Christian country, from what I understand. And so it's a totally different world, uh, you know, five miles away or however how far that line is. But I, I'm just saying that so you can't – the reason I ask that, under, uh, in a lot of situations around the world, people escaped from tyranny to freedom, you know what I'm saying, by crossing a border. But well, there have, been case, hand, there have been handfuls. I mean, we have refugees right. here in this country that have escaped. Uh, you may recall that some in the last – well, I, more of this was in the news 10 years ago because I, I actually ended up being the chairman of the North Korea Freedom Coalition in Washington, D.C. And at the time, uh, some North Koreans were like uh, escaping into embassies and asking for asylum. I mean, it was a very, uh, but hardly any. I mean, there's just a handful of people that have been able to get out. And then, of course, like the ones that have swum across the Tumon River. But once they get across the river and they come into China, China just sends them back. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, China punishes. Sends them back to die, probably. You know. They, oh my goodness! Yes. You know, it just it, it shows show you how true the Bible is. Satan is real, evil is real. I mean, uh, most of us don't see it every day, thank God. But you travel like Sandy did to to North right. Korea, you see the effects of evil and satanic influences, and because. What kind of, otherwise, it's inexplicable. In the same way that, uh, you know, uh, Hitler killed the Jews and Stalin murdered his own people and uh, you know, those kinds of uh, things, you, you can't explain how could somebody, a group of people, treat their own people who look just like them. Yeah. They're their own bloodline and treat them like, w- w- treat them like, I don't know what, treat them like worse than animals. You know what I'm you saying? Know, yeah. You know, Tim, just another thing, because I think I should add this piece of the puzzle. Uh, Kim Il-sung, who's the the first dictator, then it was Kim, Jong, uh, Kim Jong-il who just died. And now that we've got Kim young in I know it's confusing, but Kim Il-sung, the first, the first dude, um, had Christianity in his family. I can't recall, actually, if it was a mother, uh, but there was a strong Christian influence. In fact, in North Korea... You can see, you remember that when you were a kid, and maybe you don't remember this, but when I was a kid, when you became a Christian or you were confirmed or whatever your church practice was, you got a Bible that had these famous paintings by an artist uh, who portrayed Jesus as an Anglo-Saxon, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, you know, kind of sandy-haired, blue-eyed it was him with the children. It was right. Jesus feeding the 5,000. There was a whole certain, they were in all the Protestant Bibles. Uh, those famous paintings, of course, those Bibles, missionary, American missionaries, Western missionaries sent those Bibles all over the world. Well, Kim Jong-il took those paintings of Jesus with the children, Jesus, Jesus feeding the 5,000, all of them, and had paintings done of him imitating the same pose, doing the exact same thing. You couldn't miss it. I saw a whole, like five of them at this uh, government building. Um, and so then the, the irony of it is he, w- he's, he was trying to eradicate Christianity. And if you uh, or anyone in your family was found with a Bible in your home, three generations were killed wow. of your family. Three generations. So if you escaped across the Tumon River and Christians ministered to you and gave you a Bible and they found out you'd been across in the West and you had this Bible, you were, you were murdered and, and three generations of your family. That's how draconian, coming from this Kim Il-sung who had Christianity in his family. Well, you're listening to today's issues. Our guest is Sandy Rios, host of Sandy Rios in the Morning on AFR Talk. And you can find Sandy at sandyrios.com, S-A-N-D-Y. 
R I O S dot com. Sandy, you are are knowledgeable in many areas and we're grateful for the commentary on North Korea. One of the things you wanted to talk about today, though, was the conservative victory project that's in the news right now with Karl Rove and and also 